Hello, hey friends. I'm here in this beautiful surrounding, which you probably recognize, with a word on my heart from the Lord for you. This passage has been on my heart for even two weeks, so it's a joy to get this to you too. Today, I want to share a word from John chapter four. It's a short word um, from a story that follows Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well. Jesus encounters someone else, and we don't even get to know his name, but we know that he is a royal official, an official in the palace of Herod. Jesus meets everyone, and today I want to pray that he meets you, even as we open the word of God together. So let me pray, and I'd love to read this word and just share a very simple thought, encouraging, I pray for you today. Father God, we thank you that your word is living and active. We pray today that as we study your word, you might reveal to us Jesus, and that Jesus, you might speak faith into our hearts, and that Holy Spirit, you might come transform us and transform the world through us, Lord. We pray this for your glory, in your precious name. Amen. Right, let me read this, this beautiful word. After the two days, he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had all seen that he had done Oh, they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Once more, he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay ill at, Cap at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on his way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. And this was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. It's beautiful. Any of you who are parents um, will understand what I am learning now. Um, now as, as a leader and a servant of a community here at Christ Church, the young adults, I started to find that my words do have influence at times. People do ask me questions and trust me, and my words seem to have an effect on what people think, say, and do. Um, it's not as easy as do this and they do it for me. That would be a very nice life, but would potentially grow the wrong kind of character in me. Um, but parents will understand too how kids pick up and hear the things that their parents say. Now that is one level of influence, and it's an important level to be aware of. Um, but here we see how Jesus' word has incredible influence. We are hit by the suffering of a man's child. In fact, he's even in another city right now. It's as if he's in Watford General Hospital, and we are in Chorley Wood, and we're meeting Jesus, 
or maybe it's even further afield. He's at a specialist center. He's at the QE in Birmingham. And here we are seeking help from the person that we've heard on the block can do something about our child's suffering. The man says to Jesus this, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied. Your son will live. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that so powerful? But the man took Jesus at his word and departed. I love that faith. And we go on to see that his faith is more than rewarded. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. As in, on his way back home, he finds out that his son recovered. And it was at the moment that Jesus spoke the word that his son recovered. I don't know what's on your heart today, and I don't know what you need to hear, but I want to say this to you today. Jesus' word is powerful. We know that Jesus' word is powerful from the stories that we have in scripture. In fact, he is the word, the word that God spoke at the beginning and the universe came to be. By God's word, things happen, right? Jesus is the word. And even here, we see what Jesus' word is capable of doing. In just five individual words, a child recovers from a sickness that has brought him near to death. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. What do you need to have faith for today? Jesus' word is more than enough to meet your need. In fact, it is so powerful that it can heal someone in an instant. Maybe you have a financial issue right now. Maybe your heart is just hurting and you are exhausted. Maybe you're confused at a problem in your life. My prayer for you today is that you would hear the voice of Jesus speaking his words of comfort to you, of provision, of love over you. Today, he says to you, you are my son, you are my daughter, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. That is the identity you have that cannot be shaken, that cannot be taken away, because it is given to you by Jesus and secured by his death and his blood and his resurrection from the grave. The beautiful point and a small side point is the fruit of this word. Not only does it result in the prayer being answered, but it also results in the encouragement and salvation and faith of the whole household, of the man's family and his household and those around him. Today, Jesus can do amazing things through your need. And he can even bless other people through what he does in your life. I want to encourage you today, have faith. What is that one thing that you need Jesus to do for you today? Jesus is more than just a slot machine but he has compassion on you and he loves to meet your need. So let me encourage you today, bring everything that you have to him, especially if that's empty hands, because he loves to fill them. Let me pray for us. Father God, I thank you that you are more than enough for us, that you know our needs and that you sent your son Jesus to save us from our sins and heal all our diseases and meet our every need. Today, Lord Jesus, we choose to trust you as the man did to put our faith and take in you and take you at your word. Will you today speak your words of life into our hearts and into our lives? That not only we would, would we see you do amazing things through us, in us, but also through us, that our families and our friends might see you working in our lives and in us and come to put their faith in you themselves, Lord. We pray for a revival of faith in our nation, in our communities, in Chorleywood, in our hearts, Lord.
For your glory, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. Have a great day. It was great to chat. See you soon.